Hi there, and welcome back to the M5 Stack official channel. I'm Luke, and in this video, we're going to be programming the stick V in the Mike's Pi IDE. If we look on the page for the stick V, we won't see much of the MicroPython API. Since this was a product that was co-produced with Cipid, Cipid have a API that's quite well documented. But nonetheless, this API was written specifically with the Mike's Go and other Mike's boards in mind. Therefore, most of these examples need a little bit of reworking to work on the stick V. So we're going to be trying a few examples today and I'll be documenting the stick V API on my GitHub, which I'll post the link to later. Okay, let's open Mike's Pi, open a terminal with your stick V connected. We'll see the initial Mike's Pi firmware boot messages. And all we need to do is press the stop button at the top to go into the REPL mode. First off, we're going to do a classic hello world. So I'll import the LCD module first. And then since there's probably going to be a logo or the live stream as default on your stick V, we're going to clear the screen first with lcd.clear. And we can enter a hex value or one of the predefined color constants into the brackets. Now that I have a nice clear screen, how about we do a hello world and print some text to the screen. We can do this by typing lcd.draw underscore string. Then first we have the xy coordinates followed by a string or a variable, whatever you want to enter. And then lastly we can enter in the color of the text again with a color constant or a hex value. And there we have it, a nice hello world message on the screen. Now let's try to display something a bit more interesting on the screen. Fortunately for us, loading images to the screen is quite simple. We just need to prepare them properly first. So I'm going to go into GIMP, an open source image editing software, and we can prepare the image in here. So I'll create a new canvas with 240 and height 135, which are the dimensions of the stick V screen. And now I'm going to load an image and make sure I scale and rotate it so that it fits within these dimensions. I'm not going to go into much detail here as there's plenty of GIMP tutorials online. Most importantly though, is how we export the image. So once we're done, we're going to File, Export As, then we go and choose the JPG, JPEG file format, enter a title, now we need to make sure all of these boxes are unticked, and then in Advanced Options turn off Progressive. It does not seem to like progressive JPGs. Now we have that image, make sure you put it on the root of your SD card. And then we're going to display it on the screen with the following commands. Initialize a image object with image dot capital I image. And then we put in the brackets the location of the image file. And then once we've done that, we simply type lcd.display and then put image in the brackets. And there we have it, a nice crisp image on the stick V screen. Okay, let's go out of the terminal now and we'll start to write a simple program to display the camera feed onto the LCD screen. So we just need to import a few things here and then we'll initialize the LCD and then reset the sensor 
This is simply setting up the camera, its color profile, frame size, etc. And then once we've declared that, we set the sensor to run. Let's start a while loop. And then again, we set up an image object, which is snapshot, which it will show whatever comes from the camera. And then again with the LCD display image. And let's run that now. Connect first to our stick V and then press the play button to run. Oops, looks like I missed something out there. So just add sensor in there. Then we'll run that again. And now in the Mike's Pi ID we can see the camera feed and also I took a little video of my stick V running the video feed as well. Okay, now let's have a look at controlling some of the other hardware of the stick V. We're going to be trying to mess around with the LED and the buttons. Now the way we set up the GPIOs with the stick V is a little unusual as the stick V uses something called FPIOA which stands for Field Programmable Input and Output Array. Simply means that we can define any pin and map a peripheral to that pin. Some peripherals already have some predefined pins. The ones listed here are specifically for the Mike's Pi boards, but if we go to the M5 stack docs for the Stick V, go down to the very bottom, we can see here the different pins for the RGB LEDs. So now let's have a bash at trying to light up that LED. So I'm going back into the terminal now. Something that annoys me a bit about this terminal is it seems to make your text disappear if you go back over it. So if you want to use another terminal emulator then you're more than welcome to. Okay, so we're going to import everything from the mics module. And then we'll type FM, which stands for FPIOA Manager, dot register. And then here we'll type board underscore info. And then LED underscore G. So if I wanted the red LED, I could type LED underscore R and then comma fm.fpioa gpio6 and it looks like I did something wrong there, let's have a scroll back okay I guess I just added an extra bracket okay now we've got that set up Let's create an LED object and define its GPIO pin. So it's GPIO 6 and then we're going to set it to an output with GPIO.out. Okay, and now to control it, I simply type LED.value, then 0 or 1. Seems to be inverted for some reason. Now I'm still working this out. I haven't always got the right color when I've defined these LEDs, but let's just give it a shot, see if we can uh, change the LED color to a different color. So this time I'll try LED B, hopefully for blue, and then that should be uh, pin 8. So again with these predefined pins we just add HS after a GPIO. Okay. Just give it a different name this time. And again, set it to an output. Okay, and then we'll set the value. And there we go. I managed to make it light up blue. Okay, so now let's get out of the terminal emulator and back into the main Mike's Pi IDE. And I've created a simple script here where we'll use the button to turn on the LED. So as you can see here, the buttons are defined in a very similar way to the LEDs 
and I've created a simple loop here to turn on the LED if the button's pressed in or otherwise keep the LED off. So let's test that out. Voila! Okay, that about wraps it up for the video this week. Hope you found it useful. Try it for yourself. I'll leave the links down in the description for the MikeSpy documentation. And also I'm creating a GitHub repository with a few examples from this video. It's a work in progress and I'll be filling it out with more commands as and when I get time. Thanks a lot. Make sure to subscribe, like and leave a comment if you have any questions about this video. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.